crazy character. Oh, yeah. It's because Moodle doesn't translate them properly. Yeah, was that a big issue? I just to figure out what you were asking. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll see what I can do. I don't know if I can fix that. I'll, I'll look into it. All right. You have any questions or issues to deal with? If not, we're going to continue on with the right-hand rule. I remember the right-hand rule uses to determine, it actually goes back to calculus 3. When you're dealing with right-handed coordinate systems, the right-hand rule you use to determine the result of a cross product. Maybe I've been in vector calculus, you might know what a cross product is. But a cross product is just a multiplication of two vectors, that is a vector quantity. And the thing about the, the right-hand rule that we're using is that all our vectors are going to be orthogonal. So if you hold up your right hand like this, you don't see that. But if you did, all of your fingers, your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb are orthogonal. That means they're 90 degrees long. So 90 degrees between my thumb and my index finger and my thumb and my middle finger. They're orthogonal. That's what that means. So they're at 90 degrees to one another. And so the same is true for our force, velocity, and magnetic field vectors. They're always going to be orthogonal. And so if you have a question that asks you for the direction of the force, velocity, or magnetic field vector, then you know that the one that you're looking for will be orthogonal to the other two. So for example here, we'll do these in a minute, don't worry about these, but just for example, actually this would be the ones we did before. This one right here, our speed, our velocity, is in the negative y direction. Our B, our magnetic field, is in the positive x direction. So I know that my magnetic, or my magnetic force has to be in the z direction. It can't be in the x direction. It can't be in the y direction. It has to be in either the positive or negative z direction because those things are orthogonal. Those three vectors are always orthogonal. Now, we don't know if it's in the positive z or in the negative z. The last time we went through this, we figured out that it is in the positive z direction. And just to remind you, take your fingers of your right hand, you put them in the direction of v, and then you let them fold towards v. So, you know, your hand could either be like this or like this, but you want your fingers to fold towards the magnetic field vector, and then your thumb gives the direction of the magnetic force vector. Okay? However, as I said, you can limit the answers to just two possible answers, either plus z or minus z, just by looking at the other two vectors and taking the, the coordinate that is opposite that. Um, by the way, you can also have a situation, and you might see this, and we will see this later, where I have, say, a magnetic, oops, a magnetic vector, a field vector that's in this direction, and say, our velocity vector is in this direction. You do this in the same way. You let your fingers go in the direction of B, and then you have your, you have it go towards the dirt. Uh, I get the idea. So that it goes towards the uh, magnetic field vector, and then your thumb gives the direction of the magnetic force. So these things don't have to be perpendicular to one another. However, I know I just said they have to be perpendicular to one another. It's actually only that a component of that velocity vector is relevant. So, you know, I, that component of the velocity vector is relevant in determining the force. Our force, remember, is QVB sine theta. It's this sine theta term that takes the component of this vector that is orthogonal to the magnetic field. Don't sweat that too much, but we're only looking at a component of the velocity or the, the field vector that is component, that is perpendicular to the other. And that's why we had that sine theta term. If you've seen cross products before, which many of you probably have not, the cross product of two vectors A and B, A cross B is equal to this AB sine theta. Okay, let's try these. So here we're working, actually no, let's do some clicker questions first. We'll practice this a little bit more. Chapter 5 already. Okay, so here I have a positive charge. Enters a magnetic field as shown. 
uh, what is the direction of the magnetic force? So my positive charge is up, my magnetic field is into the page. What is the direction of the magnetic force? Doing that, I'm going to change the background color here. Y'all like periwinkle? That's what y'all like, right? Periwinkle. I like periwinkle. Okay, what is the direction of the magnetic force? Sorry about that. Uh, I'll stop in a few seconds. I'll stop at one minute. What is the direction of the magnetic force? Okay, let's see. So I know that since the magnetic field is into the page, it can't be into or out of the page. This is up, so it can't be up or down. So that's either be B or E to the right or to the left. And so I let my fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field is into the page, so it's going to be in this direction which is your left. So E is the right answer. Positive charge enters a uniform magnetic field. What is the direction of the magnetic force? Just right away we know it has to be what? Up or down. It has to be up or down because V is in the X, V is in the Z, and so it has to be Y, which is up or down. I'll stop at 45 seconds, 45 seconds. Okay, awesome. V is right. Uh, v is to the right. Uh, my fingers go in the direction of V. My fingers can either go like this or this, but they fold into the page like this, so my thumb points up. Uh, so my magnetic force on this positive charge is going to be upwards. Positive charge enters the magnetic field as shown. What is the direction of magnetic force? And right away, we know, don't say it right away, though we do know that it has to be either what or what. Feel free to ask your neighbor if you're not sure. Don't be embarrassed to like hold up your right hand and do all that business, okay? Just get over that. All right, we'll stop in uh, about five seconds at 45, 45. Let's see, so V is up. Should be into the page. V is right. All right. V is to the right. Or excuse me. V is up. Our magnetic field is in that direction. So our thumb points into the page. All right. Let's think of our cat. I do this to our cat, and he thinks it's like a creature or something. If I wiggle my fingers at him, and he'll do that little cat thing when it, you know, what I'm talking about, <laughs> like they chirp at birds and stuff. And he runs out and he attacks one again. Okay, into the page. Uh, do y'all have the picture in your book? Oh, they're all pointing up. Okay, I don't know why. So here, my magnetic field B is pointing up. I don't know why they didn't come through. Hmm. It's kind of hard, right? Because. So what is our magnetic force? All 
right, I'll stop at 35, 35. Okay, awesome. C is right. Did I tell you about that girl at the vegetarian club? Oh, I did tell you that one. That was funny, wasn't it? You want to hear it again? No. Uh, let's see. What is a word that becomes shorter by just taking away two letters? Wait, no, 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 I'm sorry, I messed that up. Never mind, never mind. I'll try to think of another one later. Sorry, good job. Must be enough, right? Good job. All right, the force is zero here. Uh, anytime your, your velocity and your magnetic field are in the same direction, or if they're anti-parallel, your force would be zero. And that should come about because we know this QVB sine theta. If theta is 0 degrees, that's equal to 0. If theta is 180, that's also equal to 0. All right, beam of atoms enters a magnetic field region. What path will the atoms follow? Getting into uh, mass spectrometers here. If I send a, a beam of atoms into this magnetic field, what path will they follow? Oh, good. You're doing pretty well on this. All right, so I will stop at uh, 40. 40 or 42. Let's go. <laughs> B is right. Why, why is B right? Why do they not go? Why are they not deflected? Because they're what? Because they're. Why does it follow the, the straight path? Because atoms have. <laughs> Why do these? Oh, maybe I'll know this answer then. Atoms have no charge, right? And so they're not going to experience any magnetic force. But what if this was a, uh, a beam of positive particles, like uh, positive ions? If I had a bunch of positive particles coming in here, uh, they would experience a force that would be, well, my velocity would be in that direction. They would experience a force that would be up if they were positive particles, right? You follow what I'm saying? Okay. So would they follow path number one then? Positive particles? No, they would not follow path one because we'll get into this later. But the the magnetic force is actually a centripetal force. So it's always going to cause a circular path and not a straight line path like path one. So if I had positive particles instead of neutral particles, which atoms are, then I would have a path that would look like the red line there. You all follow that? Follow what I'm saying? It's like the look on your faces looks like you're not following it, even though you gave the right answer. Atoms have no charge. They experience no magnetic force because Q is equal to zero. They have no net charge. All right, a proton beam enters a magnetic field as shown below. What is the direction of the magnetic field? So here I have a beam of positive particles. They enter into this magnetic field. I don't know what direction it's going, but I know that when they enter, they go up in a direction like that. And so I want to know what is the direction of the magnetic field. I'll stop at uh, 104, 104. Okay, good. E is right. This, in fact, is just like the one we had before. So imagine I have these positive particles that are coming in to this, uh, this magnetic field. 
Janie, I have these positive particles that are coming into this magnetic field. Uh, your velocity vector is in this direction. Because it takes this path, that means at this point, my force vector is in that direction. Now, at different points, my force vector will be in different directions. So notice as I go up here that my velocity vector, my force vector, are always perpendicular, but they change direction. And that's because, well, we get this type of path because our force vector is perpendicular to our velocity vector, which is a centripetal force. That's the definition of a centripetal force. So it causes this circular motion. Um, now, so considering here, my velocity is in this direction. My force, which is given by my thumb, points up. That means my magnetic field has to be instantaneous. If it were going down, my force would be down and the magnetic field would be out of the page. So the way I'd represent this magnetic field would look like this. And in fact, it covers that whole region where it follows this circular path. That is the idea behind a, uh, a mass spectrometer, which we'll work on quantitatively. All right, let's stop right here. We'll come back to this. All right, so let's try these. These are sort of similar to what we were doing before. The direction of the magnetic field that causes this force. Uh, I'll do this first one for you, then you can try the other two. Here, it's just sort of the right-hand roll, but backwards. Remembering that your fingers go in the direction of V, and your thumb goes in the direction of F. So here, your fingers, F. So the magnetic field, then, is in this direction. So it's to the left on this one. Y'all try those other two. So notice on this third one that I give you the magnetic field and the force vector. So you should be able to determine that third vector given any two combinations. And what about this last one? This one's a little trickier. What is my velocity vector in this case? I know it has to be left or right, right? Because this is z, this is y. So uh, my force vector is like this. My magnetic field has to be coming out of the page. So that means it's going to be like this. And so my velocity vector will be in that direction. So it's to the right. So you need to practice that a little bit. You certainly will see questions like this on the test, and it comes up a lot. There's a lot of right-hand rule stuff in this chapter. It is really important when we're thinking about the forces that objects feel when they enter a magnetic field, uh, and you will see it several times on the test. There are homework questions where you practice these types of questions, these type things, the F equals QVD right-hand rule application, and then we'll see some others as well. So I think I have a quick test on the next page. All right, so a negative charge, remember what happens if you have a negative, Caleb. Can you go over the middle one? Sure. All right, so the middle one, I have my velocity vector is into the page like this. My force vector, which is my thumb, points to the left, and so the magnetic field vector is down. Now, don't do this for the test, please, but if while you're doing your homework, you can write E. V, all right, no, 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 F, V on this finger, and then V. Don't do that for the test, but I'm just saying, like, while you're doing your homework, you can do that. You're right, F. So don't do this for the test. Like, I am very serious about that, actually. But as you're practicing, you can write up your finger. Okay? To help you remember. But um, don't worry, we'll have plenty of practice before the test. When we're at church, I always sit next to my daughter. And when I get bored or when she gets bored, I'm not sure which it is. But we'll like draw little figures on our fingers. And then we have like a little play there together. And she'll like draw happy figures and sad figures and angry figures. And I'll draw a line. And then, we'll... and then my wife says, you need to stop playing with her. All right. But y'all don't do that, I know. OK. Let's try this. A negative charge enters a magnetic field as shown in which direction will it feel a force. 
Remember what happens when we have a negative charge uh, to our force vector. I'll stop at uh, I don't know, 50, 50 seconds. Uh, is that right? Yes, that is right. B is correct. Uh, C, you put, but you did not. C is the sort of the next best answer, but it's still wrong because you have to switch the directions. If you have a negative charge, you just use the right hand roll as normal, but then you just switch the direction. So here, V is up, magnetic field is into the page, so my force would be to the left, but oh yes, my force would be to the right. My magnetic field is out of the page, but it's a negative particle, so the force is going to be to the left. So here my force is to the left. Because it's a negative particle, the force is the opposite of what you find. From what you find with the right hand rule. Or you can use your left hand if you want to do that, but it's easier just to change the direction. All right, this is a little bit different. So now instead of pushing a, or instead of a, a lone charge moving through there, I push a piece of copper wire through a magnetic field. I want to know the direction of the current. In particular, I want to know the direction of the conventional current. That's implied, but the direction of the conventional current. I remember the conventional current is not the flow of electrons, it's the flow of protons. So imagine if I'm pushing this piece of copper wire, which, as Ben Franklin would say, has lots of conduction protons, what direction will those conduction protons go? That conventional current. And yeah, there's a wink wink there, right? There. The protons don't move, it's the electrons that do. Will the current move up or move down? Stop at uh, 118, 118. Was there a seat? There wasn't a seat. Okay. Uh, so, okay, sometimes your fingers. All right, so here my velocity is in this direction. I'm, move, I'm moving this, this object through. So my velocity vector is in this direction. My magnetic field is into the page. That means that my charges are going to move up. So A is the correct answer. If they were electrons, which is the normal case, they would move down instead. Uh, but A is the right answer. I have my velocity vector in this direction. My magnetic field vector is in that direction. And so my force vector is going to be in that direction. And so this will get us into how we actually generate electricity. That's why this is important. Because when we generate electricity, all we do is we move a conductor through a magnetic field. And that causes the charge of the conductor to move. Like even in your generators, the generators that you use at home or whatever, for when the lights go out, those just have a big piece of copper wire in them. They coil a wire and they spin it around in a magnetic field. And that generates electricity and they coil a wire. We'll get into that later. But uh, this is the, the basic idea behind generators. All right, let's look at the magnetic force on a current carrying conductor. That means if I have a wire inside of a magnetic field, or excuse me, if I have a wire with a current flowing through it, and that uh, wire is inside of a magnetic field, it will, will fill a force. We can give the magnitude of that force by the current, the magnitude of the current, L 
which is we're going to say is a vector times v. Actually, I don't need the vector notation there. I'll lose that. I times L times V times sine of theta. Look, this is exactly the same as what we had before when we had F equal QVB sine theta. But now we're just sort of moving our units around a little bit. Remember, this is uh, I is coulombs per second, and then this is meters. Well, Q is coulombs, and this is meters per second. So these are exactly the same, except now instead of talking about a lone charge moving with a certain velocity, we're talking about current flowing along a certain length of wire. Exactly the same principles here and the same idea, and even the same physics. When I have a moving charge in, in, a, in a magnetic field, it will, it will feel a force uh, acting upon it. Uh, the angle theta is the angle between those two vectors, L and B where L is the length of the wire. Uh, we normally think of that length as a, as a scalar quantity, but it actually is a vector quantity because it does have a direction. Um, yeah, I is the current, L is the length, and then B is the magnetic field. All right, so this force arises because we have charges that are moving in the wire. Uh, so if you imagine, if I have this charge that's moving in this wire, just like we did before, my velocity vector is in that direction, my magnetic field is into the page, and so this wire will feel a force that is acting upwards. This is our magnetic field. If I put this wire into a magnetic field and it has a current flowing in this direction, it, uh, the force is up. As we did before, too, we're going to continue with this idea that we use a conventional current where we think about protons flowing, not electrons. Okay, so similar idea here. Let's try these. I'll give you a couple minutes to try them on your own. So here, my L vector, listen, the L vector will always be in the same direction as your current. So usually, really what we're talking about is the direction of the vector for the vector of L. But I'm going to instead talk about the direction of the current, because that tends to make more sense for people. So my current is in this direction, my magnetic field is up, and so my force has to be into the page for this wire. My force is in that direction. Uh, for this one, the second one, my current is down, magnetic field is into the page, so my palm will be into the page like this. And so the uh, the force is, what is it, to the left or right? What is that? You know, say left or right? It's to the right? Yeah, right. Sorry, I switch around and I get all my lefts and rights mixed up. So this is that's right, right? That's right? Okay. And then this last one, uh, I is up, B is out of the page, and so my force here will be to the right. Okay, those are identical to the problems we worked before, except instead of talking about a, an isolated charge going through space, we're talking about a charge in a wire. But they work exactly the same way. Uh, just to remind you, on your right-hand rule, we let our fingers go in the direction of L. They fold towards B. Or if you want to think about this, you can think of B as coming out of your palm. And then your thumb is the force. 
Your finger is going the direction of L. Or if you want to think about it in terms of I, that's, that's okay as well. They fold towards B, and then your thumb gives the force. This is true for the other expression too. F equal QVB. We had exactly the same. Fold towards, excuse me, fold towards uh, B. Fingers go in the direction of V. And then your thumb is F. So see, those are basically the same expressions. And the right-hand rule is applied in the same way for both of them. OK. Well, let's try this. This is a quantitative thing. Here, a similar deal. I push a one meter piece of copper wire through a magnetic field. There's the magnitude of the magnetic field. I push it with a certain force, and I want to know what current is created in the wire. So just as if I put a wire inside of a magnetic field with a current, it will feel a force. If I apply a force to a wire in a magnetic field, I will generate a current in that wire. So let's try this question. I'll zoom out a little bit. All right, we'll stop at uh, one minute. One minute, you know? Okay, good. A is right. Uh, so here I have F equals ILB. Sine of theta. Our angle theta is not given. It's assumed that it's 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 is 1. Uh, otherwise, it would be given. Here, my force is 12 newtons. Um, I is, I'm looking for I. L is 1 meter. B is 2.4. And then if I solve this, 12 divided by 2.4, that's equal to I, which is equal to 5 amps. All right. See, I'm not going to tell you a joke, although I do have a joke, but I'm going to tell you about an opportunity. Is that okay? Because I just learned about this. My daughter, we had a star party, and my wife had a star party out the other night. And the president, like of the university, not like President Obama, but the university president, he comes out with his wife. Cause they, I don't know, they like doing these sort of thing, and I don't know, they like nickels. And so they came out to the star party, and they brought their little dog, Guido. Have you ever seen that little dog? You know what his name? I forget the name of the breed, but it means it's like French for pillow dog. He looks like a big fluffy pillow. Y'all seen this Guido around? Anyway, my daughter was playing with him and petting him. And, and then later, uh, we got an invitation from the president's wife, Mrs. Murphy. And she said that my daughter had been accepted to the puppy play team. <laughs> they have a group of people that come and play with the puppy. And she can go to their house at any time and go into their house and play with Guido. You, too, could possibly be on the puppy play team. <laughs> You just have to show a great affinity for Guido, and Guido has to lick you all over the face and stuff too, I think. The puppy play team. You should write the president and tell him that you want to be on the puppy play team. Never knew that that existed, but now I do. Okay, so let's look at uh, the torque on a current loop. And again, we're sort of moving towards this, looking at how electricity is generated. If I think about I have a, a loop of wire in, um, in a magnetic field like this, I have some forces that are acting on it. And I can figure out what those forces are. Uh, the force on side A, which is this side, what is that force going to be? Notice my magnetic field is to the right. Here's my current. It's flowing in this direction. It comes up through here and goes through this loop. 
which is allowed to turn on an axis down the middle. So what is going to be the magnetic force on side A? It's going to be zero, right? Because the angle between the magnetic field and the current is zero degrees. The sine of zero is zero. So since F equals ILB sine of zero degrees here, that's going to equal zero. Because the current and the magnetic field are in the same direction, there'll be no force. And then the, the force on the uh, side B is going to be given by this F equals ILB sine of 90, which is going to be the current times the length of side B, which is B, little b, times the magnetic field B. I times little b times B. But uh, we can figure out the direction too, which would be helpful for us. Um, if I look at this side, my current is in this direction, my magnetic field is in this direction, so my force is into the page on this side of the loop. If you do the same for this side of the loop, you'll find that the force is out of the page. And so what you're going to get is a force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction from this side. And that's going to cause your loop to turn like this. And so your loop is going to turn with one force on, the in, on one side pushing in and one force on the other side pulling out. Okay? Uh, so the direction of the force on the left-hand side, as we said, is into the page. On the right-hand side, it's out of the page. So then we can calculate the torque, the total torque that's acting upon it. Now the forces on either side of the loop are equal in magnitude. And so we can calculate the torque. Remember, torque is equal to F times R, where R is that moment arm. And it works out like this. We get uh, F1 times A over 2. That's the length of our moment arm, the, the side A divided by 2, plus F2 times A over 2. And if I put in my, my magnitude for F, which remember was I times B times B, it's going to look like this. It'll be the magnitude of I times B times big B, that's the magnetic field, times A over 2, times 2. And so the, the total torque is I times big B times A times B. I'm going to sort of bring those out. Now we know that the area of a loop, if I have this loop, which is a square, it's A on one side, B on the other. The area of that loop is A times B. And so the torque expression, this is on your equation sheet, is just going to be I times B times the area. That'll hold for a, a square loop like this, but it'll also hold for a circular loop too. So if you have a circular loop, which is more common, then the, it would just be the cross section of the area that was pi r squared. Okie dokie. I'm pretty sure that's on the equation sheet. Let me just double check that. Oh, and don't forget, the exam's coming up April 6th, the Wednesday after spring break. So you can spend all spring break studying. Yeah. Okay, so the equation. So yeah, I'm sorry for that. I don't usually put an exam right after spring break, but I like having that exam just before the drop day. It's important like, if you want to think about dropping, uh, and so that's just the way it worked out. But normally I wouldn't do that. Let's see, where is that equation? Is it on here? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's uh, IBA. It's, it's written a little bit differently. So the torque here is NIBA. I is the current, B is the magnetic field, and A is the current. And I'll describe you what N is here in just a second. Okay? All right, so if there are multiple turns of wire, that is, if you just don't just have one turn of wire, but you have two turns of wire, or three turns of wire, or a thousand turns of wire, then it just multiplies that torque. So the torque then is N, the number of turns of wire, times A, 
times v times the area r as is written on your equation sheet n i v a all right go down from here all right let's look at this this is a loop it's in a magnetic field remember magnetic fields run from north to south poles uh, I have a current flowing through this loop. I want to know what is the direction that this loop will move. Or actually, what is the direction that the loop will initially turn? Uh, don't worry about that for now. I'll explain the wording on that. But what is the direction that this loop will rotate? Will it rotate clockwise, counterclockwise? Maybe it doesn't rotate at all. Or do you need something else to answer this? So you want to figure out the force on either side of the wire, and then that should indicate to you which direction it will turn. Take about 10 more seconds. I'll stop at 110. Okay. Let's see. So. We want to think about just one side of the wire. First of all, we need to figure out what is the direction of the magnetic field. Your magnetic field will always move from north to south pole. So let's just consider this side of the wire. My magnetic field is in this direction. My current is in this direction. So I want to figure out now what is the direction of the force on that right-hand side. Current into the page. Magnetic field is to the right. So the force on that right-hand side will be down. So the force here will be down. And actually, if we do the same on the other side, we'll find that the force on this side is up because the current's going the opposite direction. So if I have a force up here, a force down here, that's going to cause it to rotate in a clockwise direction. So A is the correct answer. Clockwise direction. Again, while we know that it is electrons moving, we always assume that it's protons. We just sort of keep up that little ruse. Okay, we're going to see later when we get into electric motors next that when this thing flips, like if I take this, if I rotate this thing as we said it does, or if I rotate it clockwise, these two are going to flip directions. So that this side will be over here, and this side will be over here, right? As it rotates, that coil of wire will rotate so that the currents on either side then will be going the opposite direction. So what does this thing really do if you have it hooked up as a motor? It's going to flip, and then it's going to say, oh, the currents are going the opposite direction. It's going to flip back. And that's all it'll do is just flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop. That's not very useful because you can't really take this motion and make it into anything that's very usable. So let's talk about electric motors and how we take this force and actually make it into something that's a little more useful. So as the loop rotates, that force changes directions. And when the coil is rotated, as we said, 180 degrees, those currents have switched places so that one current where it was going into the page is now coming out of the page. And so the force changes directions. In electric motors, then, you have to change the direction of the current after each revolution to keep the loop rotating in one direction. So every time it goes through a half rotation, you have to change the direction of the current. Or turn off the current is the solution in some simple motors. In fact, if you've ever made a little motor where you just take a little wire and hook it up to a battery, or made a motor, no, okay, I'll bring one next time. Uh, you just turn off the current every half turn. I'll show you how that looks next time. Uh, 
So anyway, two ways to do this. One, you can use a type of switch that changes the direction of the current. Uh, these are called brushes. And they're used in, um, in DC motors. Let's see, I have a video. Uh, just a second, let me pull it up. They're very cheerful people, aren't they? Um, so why did she strip half the wire off? Remember, she sort of made a point of that, that you need to strip off half the insulation, or she said, oh, so you come back and you sort of put some marker on it, which helps to insulate the wire. Why would you want to do that? Because what? Right, so it'll keep rotating instead of flipping, because if you don't strip off half that insulation, it does flip. And so what it does effectively is just turns off the current every half, every half rotation. Instead of having it actually switch current, it just turns that current off. All right. Um, and the other way to do this is you can use alternating current. This is that AC electricity. And this will change the direction of the current at a set rate. So alternating current goes from a positive current to a negative current at a very set rate, at a rate of 60 hertz. All right, let's see. Give me just a second. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll pick up with generators next time. But y'all have a good day. Uh, no class Friday, but you will have quiz on Friday. And I'll send out an announcement on Google today. Oh, and no help session tomorrow either, so no help session tomorrow. But I'll send a reminder out this afternoon.